Psalms 118. We're going to go ahead and start reading in verse 1. It says, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, because His mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that His mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that His mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that His mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in distress, and the Lord answered me, and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations can pass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They can pass me about, yea, they can pass me about, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They can pass me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns, for in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall, but the Lord help me. The Lord is my strength and song and become my salvation. I like this psalm right here. When you read that psalm, you see some pretty strong words. Uh, you know, he keeps talking about, I'm going to destroy my enemies. I'm going to destroy my enemies. And he says, you know, and he's saying, the Lord's going to help me. You know, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. He said, I'm going to see my desire on them that hate me. And there's this new mentality out there today that, you know, you're never supposed to hate anybody. You're always just supposed to be sweet and kind and, you know, just, you know, put up with horrible things. But listen, there are some horrible, wicked people in the world. And people try to act like Psalms is a thing of the past. But you know what? It says in the New Testament, sing unto yourselves psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. All right? And I believe the Psalms apply today. And you know what? If you've got an enemy, if you've got somebody that's trying to hurt you, and you've got somebody that's trying to hurt your family, you are not wrong to pray that the Lord take care of them. And you say, well, we need to pray that they get saved. We need to pray that they get right. But you know, that's just another false doctrine too I'm not going to preach on tonight. That, you know, that, you know, there are some people that are just never going to get right. There's some people that are just never going to get saved. There are some people that are completely reprobate. They're, I mean, they're, they're past saving. You know, I had somebody recently talking about a pastor that I like saying they didn't think he was saved because they, he didn't believe homos could get saved. And then we're at this meeting and the preacher's up there and he's one of these real likable preachers. I mean, just he's one that everybody's going to like. Just a super nice guy. But he started talking about uh, J. Harold Schmidt and a message he preached called God three, God's Three Deadlines. And he's like naming off the points. And one of those, it mentions in there, is sinning away the day of grace. And this guy got up there and said, everybody preached that back in the day. Everybody did. And I almost went to them and said, hey, do you think that guy's saved? Because he obviously believes the same thing. But, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it, it's this new, we got this soft mentality. It's ridiculous. It's out of control. And we need to understand there are some bad, bad people in the world. And tonight, what I want to be talking about, you know, sometimes the titles of my messages are basically just a whole bunch of terms that I want us to be familiar with. And so, the, what I titled the message tonight is just, it's cyber bullies, trolls, sadists, scorners, and sons of Belial. All right? And so, you know, what does that mean? Well, I, what I want to talk about tonight, one thing that we are facing today that the world even knows is a, is a huge problem is this thing of cyberbullying. It is a very dangerous thing, especially for young people. There are people out there that are just evil and they would like nothing better than to just literally torment people mentally and emotionally online. And the, when these kind of things happen to young people, I mean, a lot of times these kids, just because of what people are saying about them online, they'll go and commit suicide. They'll kill themselves. It drives people crazy. It causes them all kinds of emotional issues. And part of the problem that, uh, that you know, the reason these children or teenagers have so much trouble is they just, they don't understand who they're, these people are they're dealing with. And it's important that we understand who our enemies are sometimes. Because we have some enemies. I have some enemies. And one of the things that helps me is understanding my enemies. When you understand your enemies, it is a huge help. But you know why I understand my enemies is because I've been around for a while. I'm 36 years old. Teenagers who don't have a lot of life experience, they, there's certain things they just don't understand. And so we've got to teach them some things. And so cyberbully, 
Okay, you're not going to find that term anywhere in the Bible. Okay, troll. All right, you're not going to find uh, you know the ter you know, term troll anywhere in the Bible. These are modern terms. Sadists. Okay, a lot of these people who do this type of thing are sadists. I'll explain what they are in a little bit. That's also another modern term. You won't find that in the Bible. So I threw in scorners and sons of Belial because many of these people, these cyber bullies and these trolls, these sadists, these people are what the Bible would call scorners and sons of Belial. And I'll show you what those are. These are who we're up against. And if you understand your enemy, I believe that's the key to dealing with what comes from these people. And listen, parents, you better be careful because your kids are, I mean, are probably online they're, you know, if, if they're involved in social media at all, I'm telling you, it's a dangerous place. There are wicked people out there. You don't just let your kids go walk in the streets these days, I hope. You know why? Because you know there's some wicked people out there that'll do some horrible things to them. And you might think they're safe when they're in, the, in your house or in their bedroom. But let me tell you, the online world is a dangerous, dangerous place where great harm can be done to your children. And you need to understand who's out there. You need to understand who these people are that would love nothing more than to destroy your children. They are out there. And so let's look at some things in the Bible before, you know, obviously, you know, the term, so once again, the term cyber bullies and trolls, it's not in the Bible. They're new terms, but you know, we need to understand while our technology is new, there is no new sin. Okay. There are not any new types of people. Okay? The types of people who are doing this stuff, they've always been around. They're in the Bible, and I think we're, we're going to look at some of these people. They didn't cyberbull anybody in the Bible, but these people, if they, were, if they had internet and stuff back then, they'd have been doing it. That's exactly what they would have done. And so I think some of the best terms that describe these people in the Bible are scorners and sons of Belial. And so uh, one thing I was reading, it was saying over half of adolescents and teens, they have been bullied online. And about the same number have engaged in cyberbullying. Let me tell you, if your kid is ever any way involved in doing that, mom and dad, you should come down on them so bad that it's not even funny. If your kid has ever in any way, I mean, messed with somebody online like that, been mean to some, I'm telling you, you take away every form of communication. I mean, don't even let them have tin cans and a string. All right? That should be their punishment until they're grown up and out of the house, if they participate in that kind of thing. And let me tell you something, it goes on in churches and in Christian homes. Let me tell you, there are a lot of young people in churches that are just as wicked as the devil. I mean, just some of the most horrible, wretched, nasty kids are these spoiled, you know, Christian school kids sometimes. And a lot of times, they're some of the ones doing the cyberbullying. You know, this goes on amongst kids in churches. And kids in Christian schools. And I just can't even tell you how wicked these people are. And you need to understand this. And he said, you might think, you know, my kid's not one of these. We think of the real wicked people sometimes as all these, you know, ugly, pierced up, tattooed up, you know, monstrous looking people. But some of the meanest, most wicked people in the world are nice looking people. And we need to understand. And it, and it could be one of your kids. It's amazing just how, you know, messed up and perverted teenagers can be today. And if your kids are messing around online, it wouldn't take much to get them there. I mean, you would be surprised. But more than one in three young people have experienced cyber threats online. Over 25% of adolescents and teens have been bullied repeatedly through their cell phones or the Internet. And then this is the part that's kind of scary. Well over half of young people do not tell their parents when cyberbullying occurs. Chances are, if your kids are f facing this stuff, they are not going to tell you about it. And you think, why wouldn't they tell me about it? Well, I'm going to show you why they, wouldn't, they won't tell you about it in a little bit. There's a reason kids don't want to talk to their parents about this stuff. And you, that's why you need to understand this and understand how difficult it is. But first thing, let's look at a scorner. Right? What is a scorner? You know, a scorner definition is one who scorns a contemner, a despiser. Okay, we don't use the word contemn a lot, but we read the verse this morning talking about a good person is one in whose eyes a vile person is contemn. You know, there's some people we should despise. There are some people that ought to make us sick as people. You say that's a terrible attitude. No, there are. You're messed up if some people don't make you sick. 
If you're not, if you're, if, you know, if queers don't make you sick, I mean, if pedophiles don't make you sick, if cyber bullies don't make you sick, if some spoiled, rotten church kid who participates in, you know, mentally tormenting some young person doesn't make you sick, something's wrong with you. There are some people that ought to just disgust us. I mean, I'm mean, all great disgust. It's a uh, scorn. It's a scoffer, a derider in scripture. One who scoffs at religion, it's ordinances, teachers who make a mock of sin and the judgment and threatenings of God against sinners. And so, you know, the, the scorner, that's often the troll. Okay. There's a lot of trolls that are out there that they just, they're online all the time. They got nothing better to do, but to go and just criticize everything. They scoff at everything. Okay. You know, we've, we've got trolls that mess with me and stuff, you know, and that's fine. You know, listen, you don't dish it out unless you can take it, all right? And I do plenty of dishing it out, okay? And so I, the, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not just saying this. The trolls don't bother me. I do occasionally get extremely disgusted because I do contemn them. You know, some of the ones, that, you know, there's one in particular that just disgusts me. You probably know who he is because he says he's a pastor, and I don't think I believe that he's a pastor, but if, at the same time, I kind of do because I know some pastors who are pathetic and lazy and do nothing but sit around on their computers all day long. And that's what some of these people do. You know, I can't imagine what it'd be like to be a troll just to have the time to do that. And some of these guys do that and I don't get aggravated by what they say about me. I just get aggravated and disgusted at that type of human debris. I really do. There are, I mean, there are some people that are just worthless that the world would be better off without. And many of them are these trolls and stuff. Okay. Are they hurting me? No, but the world would be better off without them. I mean, some of that, you know, that troll that messed with me, you know, he's probably got a wife. He's probably got kids. There's no way he's a good husband. There's no way he's a good father. Anybody who lives like that and does that type of thing, they are the worthless, most worthless type, type of human being there is. And I feel sorry for their family. If that is a pastor, what must they be getting from the pulpit all the time from a person like that? I mean, are, is anybody in, in that church like that even saved? So I, I don't even think that it is a pastor, and I tell myself that so I won't be as disgusted by them. But I'm telling you, if that's true, that, is, that makes me sick. It makes me sick that a church would let somebody with that small amount of character get away with that. But, you know, those are scorners. You know, a lot of these people do, you know, they try to pick apart everything we preach and everything we teach, and they never give any answers of their own. It's amazing how many people are out there that are quick to jump on what I preach and to, and to criticize and critique. And, so, and you'll ask, well, what do you believe about this? And you can't find out what they believe. They don't put their stuff out there because they know they can't defend their position. But what they can do is they can scoff at those of us who do put what we believe out there. You know, that's a scorner. It's a scoffer. They're, they're no good. They're good for nothing. These people contribute nothing good to the world. It's just the way it is. And so there are, there are some people that are just full of hate. These are miserable people who are jealous of the happiness of others, and they feel like it's their responsibility to make everyone miserable, as miserable as they are. And so they will. They'll do that. Uh, so, you know, that's a scorner. So what about the sadist? You know, a sadist is a person who derives pleasure, especially sexual gratification from inflicting pain or humiliating others. And these people are out there. These are the cyber bullies many times. And you know, a, it's a person who just enjoys being cruel. And, um, and I think a sadist, they remind me of the sons of Belial in the Bible. And what's a son of Belial? Well, that's a reprobate, child of the devil, someone who's twice dead. Someone who is without hope, someone whose end is to be burned, someone who's, I mean, God is done with them. He has given up on them. He is letting them live their wicked life only so they can be destroyed. They, they have no future other than hell itself and the lake of fire. That, that's all they have. And these people are out there. And so we need to understand these people are all over the internet. And you know, there was a time, you know, and these, you know, the, a son of Belial, a scorner, you know, they're usually cowards, okay? They usually, you know, are like an animal and they have the desire for self-preservation. And so, you know, there was a time when they were careful because there was a time if you were a sadist and you tried being cruel to somebody, somebody was going to beat the snot out of you. 
You know, there was a time, you know, when people carried weapons and stuff, and you might get shot. You might get beat up. Throughout history, if you were cruel to someone, the people were going to take care of you. The government was going to take care of you. It was hard to get away with being cruel, but now, with the on, with stuff online, you can do things anonymously. It's easy to get away with cruelty. And we have freedom of speech in America. You know, you can say whatever you want on there. And they can't, it's so easy. You can go and you can torment, you can mentally torment someone in another state. You know, you can go and, I mean, you know, some, if, if some guy went after one of my daughters like that, he'd never do it in front of me because I would use whatever I had available to just, I mean, end that person. But when it's online, he doesn't have to worry about that. He's safe. He's safe in his dungeon of a basement. You know, he's safe wherever he's at. He doesn't have to worry about anything. He doesn't have to worry about getting the snot beat out of him. He doesn't have to worry about getting killed. And so these sons of Belial that are out there, these children of the devil, they, I mean, they have this wonderful place for them, this paradise they can go to the internet where they can talk to people and be cruel. And that, and that's what a lot of people do. And so if your children or ch- you know, t- young people, if you ever face any of this at all, you need to understand, I mean, as soon as it starts, the first thing you need to do is you have to tell your parents. You got to tell your parents about it. Proverbs eleven fourteen 14 says, where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. You need to understand when that type of thing's going on, there are people out there that are just cruel. They want to mentally torment you. They want to hurt you. They want to make you feel bad. They would love it if you went and committed suicide. There have been teenagers that have got on Facebook Live and have committed suicide on there. And there are sick people out there that would love to see that. And they would, it would bring them pleasure to know that they caused it. I mean, if, we've seen some of this sick stuff online. There was that thing a while back where they, these people went and they took that one guy and they were like cutting his head and trying to make him say bad stuff about Trump just tormenting and torturing this guy. And they're doing it all on Facebook Live. And of course they got caught like a bunch of dumb idiots. But why would you do something like that? There's just, there's sick, sick people out there. And you know what was sad is there's people that watched it and were enjoying it. That's the type of people that are in our world today. You've got to understand that. We do. We live in this, we live in this fantasy world where we don't think there's any really bad people. Oh, there's no such thing as a bad boy. Yes, there is. There are people that are pure evil. That is why God instituted the death penalty. There are some people that there is no reforming. There are some people that there is no fixing. The only thing you can do is put them down. And God has commanded us to do that. As a, as a government, okay, not us here or not us as individuals, but our government's supposed to do it, and it, they're just not doing it. And we've got to do that. And so parents, you need to understand too, if that happens, if your kid comes to you and some person has said some terrible things to them, advice for you is you can't react. You, you can't react. Listen, if you know, any dad, if you went and saw some horrible thing that was said to your daughter, if somebody sent them a nasty picture or something like that, okay, what are we all going to want to do? We're all going to want to go choke somebody, aren't we? We're all going to want to go kill somebody, aren't we? Okay, but listen, we can't do that, can we? First of all, we're not capable. Anybody who does that, we don't know where they live, okay? They're not going to put their address on there. They're not going to let you. So you can't just, you can't just freak out because it will accomplish nothing, and all you're going to do is make your child then feel like a victim. And that's an, that's an American thing, too, to be, feel like a victim. And then what do we do? We're supposed to go running for the government, asking them to control things so we don't ever get offended by anything. But listen, ju- if you let your kid mess around on the online world and the social media world, if you get mad when something like that happens to your child, that would be like getting mad if, at the lion in a lion cage that ate your kid when it jumped in there. Okay, that's what a lion does. Okay, they're they're a predator. They they're going to kill people. And so you what do you do? You keep your kid out of the lion cage, don't you? Remember when that kid fell in the gorilla cage a while back and they had to kill the gorilla and all that? You know, the gorilla was dragging the kid around being pretty rough with it. Why was it doing that? It was a gorilla. Okay, 
And listen, there are sadists, there are sons of Belial in this world, and they are all over the online world. And if you don't want your kid being a victim of that stuff, then you just have to say, don't go there. I'm not going to throw you in the cage. Don't throw your kid in the lion cage and then act like you're a victim or they're a victim when they get eaten. That's what lions do. Okay? And there are. We know these people are out there. They are all over in the online world. And if you're going to let your children be involved in that in any way, which I would not recommend, but if you're going to do that, you better be all over that stuff. You better keep a very close eye on everything that happens because those animals are out there and they would love nothing more than to just destroy the minds of your children. And they will try. And these people know how to do it. They are, they're dirty. They're nasty. And so parents, if that happens, you can't just react. You can't just flip out. Oh, let's go find them. Let's go beat them up. You know what you have to do? You, you have to say... We can't play in the lion cage anymore. You know, and oh, you know, my kid has a right to be on Facebook. Well, fine, my kid has a right to play in the lion cage. But I don't get to act like a victim when my kid gets eaten. And I don't get to treat them like they're a victim when they get eaten. We shouldn't have been playing in the lion cage. We know what lions do, and we know what these sadists do. We know what these cyber bullies do. They are out there. Our world is full of these filthy animals. And we've got to understand that we, we probably should just stay away from some of these things. And so if you if something happens and you feel it's a legitimate threat, then you, you need to go to the authorities. All right. You know, but there's so much of this going on. They don't have time and the resources to go investigating all these things. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do anything. So, you know, what? you have to force your kids to ignore it, even if it means they lose their cell phones or Internet access. You might have to do that. Oh, well, you know. No, don't give me the rights and all that. That is what's out there. That's just the reality. Okay? And so, you know, my cousin, when we were going to go down to Texas before the hurricane and everything happened, we were going to go stay with him, and he was talking about things we could do down there, and he told us about this one park you can go to, and there's alligators everywhere. And there's nothing between you and the alligators. And he was like, I was like, why would we go there? And he was like, well, there's so much food and they're so used to people, they're really tame. They never, they never really attack people. But they're alligators, you know? And I'm like, I'm not going there. I, I told him, I said, absolutely not. We talked about some other things. I said, we are not going to the alligator place. I, I'm scared of alligators. All right? I, I'm from Illinois. We don't have those things around here. I'm terrified of alligators. And I'm not going somewhere where there's nothing between me and an alligator. Because you know what? I don't know. They, they say those things can sense fear, and it's going to sense it with me. And I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not taking any chances. And why? Because you know, it's an alligator. They're, they're going to attack people. And these people, they're out there in the online world. They're going to attack, and it is. It's dangerous. If you want to play around there, go ahead. You want to go to the alligator place? Go ahead. But if you lose a leg, you know, don't act like you're a victim. That's what happens when you mess with alligators, all right? It's just, it's just common sense. But you do, so you have, to, you have to ignore these people if it happens. You don't respond. Mom and dad, don't get on there and respond to them. I'm going to beat you up. They love, they love that. These people are desperate for attention. And I've made that mistake with some of these trolls and stuff before. You just get aggravated. They're so stupid. And you feel like, man, I, I got to tell this person off. But you know what? The reason they troll like they do is because... They have no following. Nobody cares to hear what they have to say. Nobody, you know, when they go check their email inbox every day, it's empty because nobody cares about them. Nobody's writing to them. Nobody's given them any attention at all. So what do they do? They, you know, they got to go, you know, prodding people, trying to get them to pay some attention to them. And they, and they feed off of that. And I've been sucked into it before. It's like, man, that person is such an idiot. I've got to tell them. But then you realize they're so pathetic, they're so desperate for attention, that them being called an idiot is the highlight of their day. Yeah, that's how crummy these people's lives are. All right? their, their lives are that bad. And so you do, as a parent, if you flip out and you address these people, all you're doing is giving them what they want. You have to completely ignore it. The Bible says in Proverbs 9, 7, He that reproveth the scorner, scorner getteth to himself shame, 
and he that rebuketh the wicked getteth himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Okay, so you rebuking a scorner is just going to make him hate you more. They don't learn from a rebuke. They don't learn from reproof or correction because they're a scorner. It, they don't, you know, a wise man, it'll be good for him. He'll love you if you rebuke him. He'll love you if you correct him because he has a desire for truth. But a scorner, they just scoff at everything. They're a scoffer. And so you can't help these people. Okay, there is, there is no helping them. And so we don't even try to help them. We've got to get past this idea that no, everybody can be helped. Everybody can be saved. No, some people, good for nothing. I'll show you some scriptures on that a little bit. But also, young people, you've got to understand, if that ever happens, if you have one of these cyber bullies start saying something, or maybe even just somebody from your school, a lot of times it'll be somebody from the school that will go and get online and will attack you. They won't say it to your face, but for some reason they get real brave online. If that happens, one of the reasons that children never tell their parents about it is because whenever something horrible is said to them, Many times they feel guilty. They think, what did I do wrong? Why do people hate me? There must be something wrong with me. And you know what? They're, they're ashamed. And they, you know, you know, kids, they don't want to tell their parents about it. They know it's going to upset their parents. And they're embarrassed. Because, you know, these people, too, they're so sick. Okay? Especially these sadists. They will say things, a lot of times, especially with girls, they'll go after their appearance. You know, if they have a flaw in their appearance, they will hammer them with that. And the girl, she's ashamed. She's embarrassed because, oh, you know, that's true. People hate me because of this. They don't want to tell their parents and they, they let it eat at them. And they think that there's something wrong with them and they end up feeling guilty. But you've got to understand that a sadist, a son of Belial, okay, they want to be cruel just for being cruel. You did nothing to make them do that to you. If you did anything to make them do that to you, you were probably happier than they are. And that's the problem. In Judges 19, verse 22, a horrible story. One of the most disgusting stories in the Bible. In verse 22, it says, Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about, and beat at the door, and spake to the master of the house, the old man saying, Bring forth the man that came into thy house, that we may know them. Okay, we have a bunch of queers, a bunch of homos. They go, there's a new guy in town. He hasn't done anything. A new man's in town. And you know what? let's go inflict some pain on this man. They pretty much, these men come together. And this guy's a perfect stranger. He hasn't done anything. And they're ready to gang rape him. And, that man, and, and sadly, you know, that man, here's another good lesson for you young ladies. All right, young lady, you know, one of these days when some guy wants you as a concubine, he doesn't want to marry you. He just wants you for your body. And he's not willing to commit to you. This man had a concubine. And what does he do? He sends her out to those animals. Now, what did she do? Nothing. But these men abused her all night long until she ended up causing her to die. What did she do? Nothing. But these were sons of Belial, and what they just wanted to inflict pain on somebody. That's how they got their pleasure. That's what a sadist does. They get sexual gratification from causing pain and humiliating other people. And that's exactly what they did to that woman. And these type of people have been around since the beginning of time, and they're around today, and they're looking for people that they can inflict pain on. And kids, you need to understand, if that happens, if somebody says something horrible about you, it's not because you did something wrong. You don't need to be embarrassed. These people are just animals that want to hurt people. And you need to tell your parents about it. You need to let them protect you from it. And you don't need to be ashamed. Even if what they say about you is true and they're trying to use it in a negative way, make, just, you, need, you need to let them know. You've got to let your parents know because it's amazing just how clueless some parents are about what's going on in the world. And you know what? I think it would probably be good for some parents to see some of the things that are said online. You should probably watch some of these documentaries that are out there about the cyberbullying and watch some of the news reports, see some of the things that are said. Maybe some parents need to see some of the pictures that these kids are getting from these perverts. Why would they do that? Why would they send such a nasty picture? They're trying to corrupt the minds of young people. They're just trying to do damage. Oh, I can't imagine anybody being like that. 
They're all over the place. The world knows it. Law enforcement knows it. And it's like Christians, we're the ones that are oblivious to it. The world knows that these people can't be fixed. The, you know, the world knows that. Psychology even recognizes the fact these people can't be fixed, but we got a bunch of these bleeding heart Christians that are out there. Oh, we just need to pray that they get saved. No, these people need to be ended is what needs to be done. And we need to pray our government starts getting a little more strict with the death penalty. We need to pray that not that they get rid of the electric chair, but that they add electric bleachers. There's a lot of people that need to go and because these people can't be fixed. Why would we lock them up in prison forever? That's such a waste of money. I mean, you know, put them down. Some, you know, volts of electricity. Electricity, you know, it's, it's not that expensive. Bullets are cheaper. Rope's real cheap. You can reuse it. I mean, you know, they got to do something. These people can't be fixed. And so they do. When, they, when people are attacked, they feel like they did something to deserve it. But some people just want to cause pain. Look at John chapter 15 and verse 23. Jesus said, He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. And see, young people, they don't have a lot of life experience. They don't understand. You know, when I was a teenager, I had no idea what was out there in the world. I had no clue what was out there. I, did, I, I wouldn't have been ready for this stuff. But listen, there are, there are people that will hate you without a cause. And most people do. And they think, you know, why do, why do they hate me? There must be something wrong with me. And that's what these people want you to think. But the truth is, there are people that just hate without a cause. You know why? Because they're cruel. They're children of the devil. You know, we all know the devil hates for no reason. We all know the devil lo would love nothing more than for you to just die and for you to be miserable. And in the Bible, there's children of the devil. And you know, Jesus referred to the Jews as being children of the devil. And it was them that hated Jesus without a cause. And just like we are children of God, we've been born again into the family of God. And we can never get out of it. I believe there are some people that the Bible refers to as twice dead that have become the children of the devil. I don't believe everybody who's lost is a child of the devil. But I do believe that some of them are. And I don't believe they're ever getting out of that family. And just like their father, they will lie they would kill if they could get away with it. They will do whatever wicked, perverted thing they can do. That is the reality of what's out there. The devil has children and they're people. And just like the devil's going to be cast in the lake of fire one of these days, his, those children are going to be cast in the lake of fire. And we need to pray our government will put them there sooner because that, that's just that's what we need. So that sadist, they do. They often attack people based on their appearance, especially young girls. You know, the sadist wants to take away any self-worth that you might have. And, you know, a lot of young men do this with girls, too, because that's how they get them to give them what they want. You know, dads, you need to understand it's your responsibility to make sure your daughters realize they're valuable, that they are precious. That's your job, moms and dads, especially dads. And listen, there's young men out there. They don't love your daughter. You know what they want from them. But in order for them to get that, they've got to lower their self-worth. And then they do. And many times, I mean, horrible things, young men will say to these girls, because if they can get them feeling worthless and like garbage, you know what? They'll act worthless and they'll act like garbage. And they will do what these guys want. And they don't care about them one bit. And girls often fall for that stuff. Listen, you see the way girls dress these days. It's clear they have no value. There's no self-worth. What they'll let these guys do and get away with, or treat them terrible, and they put up with that stuff. How does this happen? Because people have been tearing them down. It goes on in schools, and it goes on in the internet world, and we cannot let that happen. Our children are valuable. Your, young, your daughters are valuable. Their purity is valuable. It's a precious thing, and we need to remind them of that. We need to let them know how precious they are. So when some worthless pile of garbage punk comes along, and wants them for his carnal purposes, your girl will have enough character and self-worth to say, 
get out of my face, bum. And that's what needs to be said to these guys. And so that scorner, they attack those that they know are better than them. Look at Isaiah chapter 29. I think this is an interesting passage. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 20 says, For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are caught off that make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. that make a man an offender for a word. What are they doing? That scorner, they're making the guy preaching the truth out to be a bad guy. Now, do we not see that too? You know, the guys who are preaching the truth, they're the ones getting attacked all the time. And who is it that attacks them? It's the stinking, worthless, cowardly, anonymous trolls that all all they do is scoff. They never give any solutions. And they attack the people that are preaching the truth. They make them an offender for a word. They, uh, They lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate. That person that's authority. They stand in the gate. What are they doing? They make judgments. They correct people. Isn't that what preachers do? And these scorners, they make them out to be the bad people. And it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing the horrible things I've had said about me. And it's like, are you serious? <laughs> I'm that bad for you know, preaching against perverts, people who do this type of stuff that we're talking about. You're going to defend you know, these animals that are out there that call themselves people and, and that will do whatever they think they can get away with doing. And I'm the bad guy for preaching against them. How does that happen? These people are scorners. They're they're good for nothing. And it says, it calls them the terrible. It's going to be brought to naught. The scorner is consumed. All the works of iniquity cut off. These people, you know, these that we're talking about, they're they're going to hell. That is their end. They're not there yet. But they are as good as in hell. That's where they're going to go. And we just need to understand that is who we're up against. And that's what they're going to do. These people, they're not attacking the Methodists. They're not attacking the Presbyterians. Why would they do that? They're not standing for anything. They're not saying anything. You know, they're not attacking Pastor Trendy in his pink shirt. Because Pastor Trendy doesn't say anything. He doesn't reprove anybody. You know, they attack the people that are preaching the truth. What do they, they attack those that they know are better than them. That's all there is to it. And kids, you need to understand that too. These people that want to bully you, whether it be in school, whether it be in the online world, it's probably people that are jealous of you. They're jealous of you because you're happier than they are. You've got a better family than them. You're better looking than them. And what do they got to do in order to elevate themselves? They got to try to knock you down a peg. So take it as a compliment. Take it as a compliment when you're attacked. But listen, you can't hold that stuff inside. Once again, you have to let your parents know what's going on. But don't take it personal. Don't let it, don't let it get you down. That is a scorner. That scorner, they don't like reproof. You know, they turn aside the just for thing or not. Because that scorner doesn't like anyone who reminds them in any way of how pathetic they are. Okay? You know, we don't, you know, if you're pathetic, if you're a loser, you don't want to be reminded of it all the time. But these people, they got to look at their pathetic faces in the mirror every day. And many times as Christians, we are, we are a reminder of just how pathetic they are. In Proverbs 9, 9 says, Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. See, they don't like hard preaching. They can't handle it. Because God doesn't want them to handle it. If they they would listen to the hard preaching and like it, they would probably get right. God doesn't want them to get right. Because they've crossed the line. They're going to hell. They're reprobate. They're cast away. They're, They're worthless. And they can't, these people, they can't even handle seeing people live a spirit-filled life. It's a reminder to them of what they are not. It's a reminder to them, your life is a reminder to them of what they should be doing. And they don't want to be reminded of that. The scorner can't handle correction of any kind. And our lives, if we're following the commands of the Bible, if we're doing the right thing, even if you don't open your mouth, Okay, if you're a lady and you dress like a lady, you are a reminder to them that they dress like a whore. That's a, it, it, it's your walking testimony. Your people know they shouldn't be going out half dressed. 
Women know they shouldn't be dressing up like a man. And if you are dressed up as a modest, godly lady, and if you're doing a good job of it, especially and looking nice, you are a reminder to them that there is something greatly wrong with them. And so they despise you. And they're going to try to make fun of you when they see you, you know, dress them out way because you are your, your life is correction. Proverbs 15, 12, a scorner loveth not one that reproveth him. Neither will he go unto the wise. So the world hates spirit filled Christians because we are, we're a reminder of everything they're doing wrong. They don't want to see our kids who are well behaved that we spank because their kids are little devils that they're filling with drugs and they know that's not right, but they're scared. They're intimidated. They're doing whatever their public school teacher tells them or the psychiatrist tells them. And we are a reminder to them that what you do does not work. We are a reminder to them that you are failing miserably. A lot of people take comfort in seeing other bad kids. Ah, it's just kids. This is the way it is. And then they see a big family who has a bunch of kids that are behaving themselves. You know what it tells them? I'm doing something wrong. And they don't want to be reminded of that because they're a scorner. Now, there's some people out there who are doing things the way the world says. They're not scorners. They're not children of the devil. They see what we're doing and they're like, man, maybe I need to start doing that. And they're because they're wise. They're being corrected by our lives. But those scorners, those children of the devil, they will always criticize what we do because we are a constant reminder of everything they're doing wrong. And you know what? We need to do that. We need, we need to be an example. Okay? One of the reasons, too, everybody's dressing down in church on Sunday because you know, people, you know, on, they don't like, it's like they don't want to go out in public on Sunday. They don't want to go out to eat looking like they just came from church. Because you do, you get the dirty look sometimes. And why would somebody give you a dirty look for that? Because they know you just came from church and they know they should have been in church. And if you look like you just came from church, you reminded them of what they missed and they don't like that. And we do. We pick up on these things. We pick up on the dirty look sometimes. And I don't want anybody to stare at me. You know, I'm going to go to one of these casual churches. Hey, you know what? People need to be in church on Sunday. And, And we do. We remind them that they should have been in church without even saying you should have been in church. And they don't they don't like you know, Some people don't mind. But some people, they hate it because they're a scorner. So the only positive contribution that a scorner has for society is to be publicly punished. Not for his own good. You don't punish a scorner for his own good. You don't punish a child of the devil. You don't execute somebody for their own good. It's for the good of everyone else. And it says in Proverbs 19.25, Smite a scorner and he'll learn his lesson. No. Smite a scorner and the simple will beware. And reprove one that hath understanding, and he will understand knowledge. Proverbs 22.10 says, Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. Proverbs 24.9, The thought of foolishness is sin, and a scorner is an abomination to men. Now, how do those verses go along with these people? Oh, we just got to get them saved. We got to get them into church. You know, we've got to try to straighten them out. No, the Bible says cast them out. Oh, but they need to get saved so they, you know, they can go to heaven. No, they need to be cast out. They need to live a life of destruction. We need to see their destruction. We need to see their end. That way, our young people in our church will see that and say, you know what? I'm not going to live like that person. I don't want to be them. And they will not go their way. But people haven't got the stomach for that today. And so what do we do? We're bringing these people into church and they're corrupting everyone. They're leavening the whole lump. And we've got to keep, we've got to keep them out. So the cruel truth about these type of people is they failed at life. They have no purpose. They, they have no future. And they're dangerous because they have nothing to lose. Those, you know, those, I, I, I'm not scared of too many people. But I'm kind of scared of that person with nothing to lose. They have, you know, they have their hope of a good life and eternal life is over. There's no, there's no hope for them. You know, they're already the bottom feeders of society. They're only, they're all, so they can only pull you down. You know, so the, the, the destruction is what's coming for them. There is no fixing them. If you try, they're only going to pull you down. And so they have the advantage when you engage with them because they have no testimony. They have no reputation to lose. 
they can't be hurt because they're already destroyed. It says in Hebrews 6, 7, For the earth which drinketh in the fire that cometh oft upon it, and drinketh, or bringeth forth herbs, meat for them, by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. And, you know, and that's you know, a symbolic of people right there. That is their end. They, 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 are, they are no good. So we do. if we engage with these people, what's going to end up happening many times is we're going to lose our cool. And we're going to lose our testimony. Oh, yeah, but what they said was so much worse. What they did was so much worse. But, you know, they had nothing to lose. They have no reputation. They have, they have no testimony. They have no opportunity to contribute positively to society while we still do. So we can't engage with these people because we have something to lose. They don't because they've already lost everything. And so the reality of the world today is there's a lot of wicked people who are looking for someone to prey on. They are predators. The Internet makes it very easy for these people to do damage because, once again, there's no threat of the physical harm for the predator. And so they, they, they're cowards. So a lot of these people are anonymous. You don't know where they live. So, you know, I dish it out. But guess what? Everybody knows where I'm going to be every Sunday at 6 and Wednesday at 7 and Sunday morning at 10 and 11. People know, people know my phone number. They can call me up and chew me out. And they've done it before. You know, they can send me nasty emails if they want and let me know what they think. And they've done that before. They can, they can show up here and they can punch me in the nose if they want. I won't know it's coming. I might think it's a visitor coming to church. They could haul off and, you know, clock me good when I'm least expecting it. But so I'm not worried about that. And so these people, they can attack. And you know what? They can be ridiculous. And we can't do anything back to them. I can't, I can't go and punch some of these people in the nose. I don't know where they live. And I wouldn't do that anyway. But at the same time, they don't know that. And they're, they're scared. They're cowards. These, we, we've got to realize just how worthless some people are. We've got to get past this idea that no, everybody's basically good. Everybody has a future. No, some people have no, they have no future. Their only thing they had to look forward to is the lake of fire. That's their future. And there's no changing that. And that being said, we've got to make sure we have the wisdom, we have the maturity to understand these things so when the attacks do come, they won't affect us. If you know you're right with God, you can say who cares to the rest of the world. And it's easier for us who are adults and have life experience, but your kids, it's, it's different. They're not dumb. They're not foolish. They're young. They've not lived life very long. They haven't, you know, I've known some of these people and I've seen over years what happens to these people. And so when more of them come up, I understand how horrible their end's going to be. And if anything, I pity them. But I, I'm able to do that from life experience. Some of the junk that I've had thrown my way recently, there was a time when it would have really messed me up. But now, I'm, so, you know, I'm just going to be honest, sometimes I'm entertained by it. You know, some of the people that are out there saying stuff about me. I mean, I'm like, hey, kids, go watch this. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I think it's funny. But some people, man, they, they melt at that. And so, kids, if, if that ever happens to you, you need to understand you are not at fault. You don't need to feel guilty. And you do need to let your parents know because it can get to a point. You might, oh, I can handle it. It doesn't bother me. It can get to an unhealthy level real fast. It can get out of control real fast. Anytime you, you shouldn't be communicating with anybody online that you don't know. And even if it's somebody, you know who they are. I mean, if it's not like somebody that your parents know, well, someone who's friends, someone who's a Christian, there's people from your school. You might know who they are, but they're just as wicked as the devil themselves too. You don't know that. And parents, you've got to watch out for this stuff. This is a real problem that unfortunately there have been many cases where teenagers have committed suicide and the parents had no idea there was even a problem. You know, I, I'm close to my kids. That, that wouldn't happen. I hope not. But you've got to understand, if you let them on the social media world, they're playing in the lion cage. And so you better keep a close eye on them. You better be all over that. Listen, I don't, I'm not letting my kid go in the lion cage, period. But if my kid is going to go in the lion cage, I'm going in there with a shotgun with them 
And so if, I'm, if my kids are going to be on social media, I'm going to be looking over their shoulder at everything. And as soon as the lions start to attack, as soon as those sadists come to attack, man, I'm shooting that thing down fast. And you, bet, you better be all over that, mom and dad. Don't listen. To, oh, no, I, I have a right to my privacy. No, you, you don't have any rights when you live at home. All right? You have no rights. You are under a hostile dictatorship when you're living at home. That's the way it's supposed to be. Your mom and dad, they tell you don't do that. You say, how? <laughs> you know, you say, I mean, you, you, you listen to them. <laughs> you don't have to do it just like that, but practically the equivalent. And you'll be safe. Your parents love you. They have the life experience, and they can help you with that stuff. I don't want to see anybody here become a victim to that. So when it happens, if, if it happens to you, you know, just understand what it is. Understand who these people are. Recognize them. Identify them. These are worthless pieces of human debris. They have no future but the lake of fire. Why would we mess with people like that? I don't go out, you know, I see dead raccoons and dead skunks on the road all the time. I don't go out there and try to, what can I do to help bring these things back? First of all, it's a skunk. I'm glad it's dead. And it's dead. Why would I try to bring that back? These people like that, they're no better than a dead skunk. If you mess with it, you're just going to stink. And you're not going to accomplish anything. You mess with these people, you're just going to stink. You're not going to accomplish anything. Just let them rot, let them die, let them go to hell, and leave them alone. That might sound mean, but you will do yourself and everyone else a great service if you do that. So I hope that was helpful to you tonight. Let's go ahead and stand.